It was winter on the island of Sodor. The snow covered fields and railway lines. All the engines were hard at work except Percy. Come on, Percy, this isn't time to have a rest. I'm stuck, moaned Percy, and my funnel's freezing up. Driver's sent for help. Ha, huffed Thomas, and went on his way. Later, Thomas had to help clear snow by a tunnel, but it was too deep and he got stuck. Thomas was very cross. Snow is nothing but trouble, he moaned. Rusty was close by. Driver says that this winter is just about as bad as the worst winter of all. How worst? asked Thomas. I'll tell you, replied Rusty, and the little engine did. Scarlowy was working the line to the slate mines in the mountains. When the snow came, it was difficult to work. They used the snow as a double buffer zone to help stop trucks skidding through to the ravine. One day, Scarlowy set off to the mines with some empty trucks. Meanwhile, there was trouble at the mine. The winch that hauls the trucks up and down wasn't working properly. Scarlowy had reached the ravine. High above him were the mine yards. That snow looks dangerous, said his driver. The sound of your engine and the trucks could cause an avalanche. I'll set off an emergency cap and see what happens. Scar Lowy watched as his driver prepared it. Then they ran over the cap. The bang echoed round the gorge. Nothing happened. Good, said his driver. All's well, we'll have a cup of cocoa and then make our way. But high above them, all was not well. A long line of full trucks was about to be winched down the slope. They had just started their journey when some empty trucks became derailed. The winch groaned. Break it! Snap it! shouted the trucks. And they did. On, on, on! Faster, faster! they giggled. The snowbank and buffers will stop them, said a workman. But he was wrong. The trucks plunged into the ravine. Scarlowy and his driver heard the noise and looked up. Avalanche! they cried. When the snow plume cleared, there was no sign of Scarlowy. He was buried deep inside the high drift blocking the ravine. And then came the funny part. What's the funny part about an avalanche? asked Thomas. Well... No one knew that the heat from Scarlowy's engine had helped to make an igloo. It's a snowball. It's a snow house. It's an engine. They cleared away the ice only to find Scarlowy's driver and fireman drinking cocoa as if nothing had happened. Luckily for them, but it just goes to show you can't trust trucks. Or snow, said Rusty. The men had just cleared the snow away from him when Gordon puffed by with his machine. Hey, look out, there's snow about, laughed Gordon. He stopped by the tunnel and wheeshed loudly. Then it happened. Uh-uh. Help! cried Gordon. If Scar Lowy survived a snowfall and laughed, surely a big proud engine like you can do the same, chuckled Thomas. <laughs> moaned Gordon, and then fell as silent as the snow. It was cold and snowy on the island of Sodor. The village children had built a snow engine. They were excited. The winter holidays were here. People were coming from far and wide to visit the island. But this year, there was even more snow. It had covered the island and blocked the roads. 
Bertie the bus couldn't take any passengers. So the fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. Percy, you are to pull the passengers today, the fat controller said. Percy was worried. He usually took the mail or shunted trucks. He hadn't pulled passengers for a long time. Gordon will show you what to do, said the fat controller, and he left. I'm an express engine, huffed Gordon. I shouldn't be slowed down by a small engine like Percy. <laughs> Gordon went with Percy to the depot. But when Percy backed up to collect his carriages, he bumped them very hard. No, 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 you need to puff smoothly. Gordon huffed impatiently. Watch me, you'll soon learn how to pull passengers. Gordon backed smoothly up to his carriages and buffered up to them very gently. Very smooth, the yard manager said. Best buffering I've ever seen. Gordon was so proud he thought his boiler would burst. Maybe teaching Percy will be fun, Gordon said to himself. Then he'll see I'm the biggest and the best. Gordon pulled in to Knapford Station. He rolled smoothly to a stop. Perfect, Gordon chuffed. Then Percy pulled into the station. Look at all those passengers, he gasped. He blew his whistle and wished lots of steam. You're doing it all wrong, huffed Gordon. Don't wish until your passengers are on board. Watch me. Gordon waited. When all the passengers were on board, he wished some steam. Gordon was very proud. He liked showing Percy that he was the best. Gordon was having lots of fun, but Percy wasn't. Percy was fed up. Gordon and Percy puffed across the island. Gordon puffed through the snowy valley. Percy puffed under the icy bridge. Later, Gordon and Percy were at another station. Their passengers were all on board. Percy wished some steam. You're learning a little bit, groaned Gordon. But you're still not doing it right. Watch me. Gordon wished some steam and pulled out of the station. Big blue show off. Puffed Percy. Gordon wasn't listening. He was already puffing through the countryside. I'm so clever, Gordon chuffed. There must be someone else I can show. And there was. Watch me, Gordon chuffed as he raced past James. I puff nice and smoothly. Then he raced past Toby. Watch me, I'm fastest and best. Gordon puffed into the station. He was very excited. There were lots of people he could show off to. Watch how smoothly I can go, puffed Gordon. Gordon was so busy showing off, he didn't see how icy the track was. Gordon slid right through the station and into a siding. Everyone watched as he puffed into a big pile of snow. Cough, Gordon. Luckily, no one was hurt. The fat controller was very cross. I asked you to teach Percy, he said sternly. Not show off all afternoon. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Gordon puffed quietly. Just then, Percy puffed past. He pulled smoothly into the station. All of Percy's passengers arrived safely at the platform. Gordon's passengers had to walk through the snow. Gordon was very embarrassed. His face was as red as Bertie the bus. 
But Edward soon pulled him out of the snow drift. Later that evening, it was time to go home. The passengers were all aboard Gordon and Percy. Gordon wanted to show Percy how smoothly he could puff. But then he remembered sliding into the snowdrift. Gordon didn't want to look silly again. Percy, you go first, Gordon puffed. Show me how smoothly you can go. So Percy pulled smoothly out of the station and Gordon followed. Gordon and Percy puffed through the snowy countryside and Gordon didn't show off once. At last, Gordon and Percy arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. Did you see how smoothly I puffed? asked Percy. Yes, said Gordon. You have learned very well. Percy was proud. But then again, Gordon added, I am a very good teacher. Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. The morning ground was covered in crisp white frost. Thomas and Emily were happily chuffing up and down the line. Thomas was enjoying pulling Annie and Clarabel. He thought he was doing a grand job. But Emily had other ideas. She thought he could be doing an even grander job. So Emily decided to help Thomas by telling him what he was doing wrong. When she saw him puffing down the branch line, she cried out, Slow down, you are going too fast and bumping your passengers. Later, Emily saw Thomas by a bridge. He had stopped to take on water and was talking to some children. Stop talking to the children, said Emily. You are working and they will make you late. I'm never late, said Thomas huffily. There's always a first time, said Emily cheerfully, and she puffed away. Thomas was cross. He loved talking to children and thought Emily was being a big bossy buffers. Annie and Clarabel agreed. I am never going to listen to Emily ever, ever again, said Thomas. So there. The next morning, a sleepy Thomas had to leave Tidmouth Sheds bright and early. He was to collect some trucks from the quarry and take them to the docks. Later that morning, the fat controller arrived with a new weather report. There is snow on the way. You must all have your snow ploughs fitted. Excuse me, sir, said Emily, but Thomas has already left for the quarry. Then you must find Thomas and tell him Sir Topham wants him to wear his snow plough. So Emily puffed away to get her snow plough fitted. The workmen fixed Emily's snow plough on in no time at all and she set off to find Thomas. Emily was very happy. She was looking forward to telling him what to do. Thomas was taking on water at Maithwaite Station. Emily puffed up in front of him. She blew her whistle, but Thomas didn't say hello. She just wants to boss me again, grouched Thomas. Thomas, she called. You must go and get your snowplow fitted. Thomas could hear what Emily was saying, but pretended he couldn't. He thought he was being very clever. So Emily tooted even louder again. You must go and get your snowplow fitted, she cried. Bother snowplows, said Thomas, and bother Emily anyway. The weather is perfectly fine. And he puffed away as fast as he could.
Thomas delivered the trucks to the quarry, then set off to collect the cream from the dairy. Everything was going well. But soon the clear blue sky was eaten away by dark clouds. They look like snow clouds to me, said his driver. And he was right. Soon big flakes of white snow began to fall. Then the snow gathered into drifts and covered the tracks. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas as his wheels began to slip. Snow fell all over the island. Emily cut safely through the drifts with her snowplow. Thomas will be in trouble now. Emily was right. Thomas was working harder and harder, but he had to go more and more slowly. We can't go on, said his driver. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. And his driver went for help. It snowed and snowed. Thomas felt very cold and twice as miserable. Then he heard the sound of an engine. Thomas was delighted until he saw who his rescuer was. It was Emily. I told you to go and get your snow plough, she said. Now look what has happened. Thomas was still cross. You should say sorry for bossing me about. I am sorry, said Emily. Sorry you didn't listen to me. Emily and Thomas chuffed into Tidmouth sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was the fat controller who wanted him to wear his snowplow. Emily felt bad too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I'm sorry, sir, said Emily. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed the fat controller. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. Soon the work was finished and Thomas was wearing his snowplow. Thank you for owning up, said Thomas. You are a very good friend. That's all right, said Emily. You're a good friend too, but next time, if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what I say. Even Thomas had to laugh. It's winter holiday time on the island of Sodor. It's very cold, but the engines don't mind. They love this time of the year when the stations look jolly in their decorations. There is plenty of work with passengers and parcels to be delivered, no matter what the weather. Driver says there's more snow on the way, said Edward. We'll soon be wearing our snow plows, said James. You'll enjoy that, won't you, Thomas? teased Henry. You know I won't, said Thomas. I don't like my snowplow. Sure enough, that night the wind blew and the snow fell heavily. The next morning the fat controller arrived. He told the engines they were to have snowplows fitted. And you are to collect something special from Callan Station. It's needed for the village feast on Toby's branch line. Thomas was excited about his special, but not about his snowplow. Please, sir, my plough is awkward and uncomfortable. Do I have to wear it? Everyone has to wear a snowplow, said the fat controller. The fitters, his driver and fireman all helped with Thomas's snowplow. We'll have to try that again, laughed his driver. 
big, horrid, awkward thing? Thomas grumbled. He was much happier when he arrived at Callan Station and saw his special. It was a beautiful Christmas tree. The trees to have lights and stand in the middle of the village, said Edward. Make sure you get it to Toby safely. I will, said Thomas. Thomas arrived at Maithwaite and Toby was very happy to see him. The villagers will be delighted with this tree, Toby said. I'm glad you have your snow plough. I can't clear the snowdrifts by myself. Thomas couldn't see there was a huge rock buried under the snow. Suddenly, his snow plough hit the rock. Bouncing buffers, exclaimed Thomas. My plough is broken. His driver tried to stop, but the broken plough hit the water tower. Cinders and ashes, exclaimed Thomas. We can't go any further, said Thomas's driver, and there's no one to help us. But the villagers need their tree, said Thomas. Let me try again. I'm sure I can make it. It wasn't easy without a snowplow, but Thomas was determined. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed. Thomas was trying as hard as he could, but there was just one snowdrift after another. Finally, Thomas and Toby were pulling into the village station. Thomas whistled, and the villagers cheered when they saw their beautiful tree. Hurrah, they said, hurrah! The next day, the Fat Controller sent for Thomas. Thomas was worried. What would the Fat Controller say about his broken snowplow? But the Fat Controller wasn't cross. He was very pleased. The villagers had a wonderful feast, he said. You were very brave to take on that snow without a plow. Thank you, sir, said Thomas happily. As you know, continued the Fat Controller, there are no spare snow plows, so you'll just have to do without yours for a while. Oh, thank you, sir, grinned Thomas. <laughs>